is the soluble group. Again, for the soluble groups, we also are going to identify um, three ions. Uh, I have a suggestions in the lab manual, like if you, you can go up to like seven different ions and you can test with the flame test and you get different color of the flame and identify, but I trying to avoid having too many uh, solutions at one station and um, at least for your course, if it's you're taking online, you're only responsible for identification of these three ions. But this experiment can be done for more ions. But in that case, I suggested to have like different stations and every station is just for one of the ions and students move from one station to, to another station. How do we identify soluble compounds, soluble uh, group? What the name it says is these are soluble group. So we cannot precipitate them out and then try to selectively precipitate them. And when we precipitate, then we can, uh, we can selectively um, dissolve or, or dissolve and, and form like different aliquot. So soluble group can be mixed with chloride group. They can be mixed with the sulfide group. It can be mixed with all all of them. So these are the only ones that they are not going to precipitate. Because they don't precipitate, they don't form like a distinct precipitates or solids, we are going to use the, uh, we are going to use the flame test for that. For ammonium ion, we are using a different reaction, um, reaction with sodium hydroxide. But for sodium ion and potassium ion, we are using the, the flame test. So if the solution contains only sodium ion, a yellow color flame would be evident. So you are using like the nichrome wire, which you will see this experiment done in the video for the experiment. Just talking about the theory, how it works. Um, if, if you have the nichrome wire already fired and cleaned up with from any previous use or contamination of other ions by, by heating up for a long time on a, on a benzene, Bunsen burner. Um, then you get some of the solution. You dip the, the nickel wire um, into a solution that contains um, sodium ion and you place it from the, on the edge of the flame. You will see a like very bright yellow color flame um, that indicates sodium is, is present. If sodium is not present and you have potassium ion, potassium ion by itself is present and there is no sodium ion, you're going to see like a light violet color. But if both of them are present in the, in the mixture, if you have both sodium and potassium, now you have to use a cobalt, uh, cobalt glass. When you use the cobalt glass, cobalt glass is going to filter uh, and is going to capture or block the yellow color. The yellow color is not going to come through the, the cobalt glass. Only the purple color would come through the glass and you would see that you have, uh, you have potassium. So this is the flame test. You are using the flame test and based on the, the color that appears, you can identify presence of each of these ions. For example, copper would give, give like a greenish blue color or bluish green color. Um, calcium would be like orange red color. Barium is going to be light green color and lithium is going to be a pink color. For analysis of the ammonium ion, you're going to mix few drops of the sodium hydroxide, place sodium hydroxide, drops of sodium hydroxide in a, in a reaction in a container or evaporating dish, uh, which is like a ceramic dish. You place the drops of the sodium hydroxide and then you add the sample. Now, if the sample has ammonium ion, NH4+, that is the ammonium ion. If the sample contains ammonium ion, is going to react with sodium hydroxide and it will generate ammonia, water, and NaCl. Now, the ammonia has a very strong odor of the ammonia. And if you can test that by just fanning the vapor toward your nose and you, you, you see that you, there is 
ammonia odor of the ammonia that is confirming that ammonium ion NH4 plus was present in your unknown or if it's a known sample, you have the, uh, you have the ammonium ion. Okay. That's for soluble, which is a short, short experiment, uh, but that's the only way you can identify the soluble group. Thank you.